Okay, so I got this giant green slider here. It's in a bad spot, but it's nice and visible. So I have my little player here, and this is actually a trigger event that's going to damage our player. So unlike a normal, we're going to, you know, hack off chunks of health, we're going to do more of an effect like this. Where we can see it come down in, like, chunks. So... <clears throat> The easiest way to do this, I'm going to delete all that. So, let's just take a little quick look at our trigger. Badoop. Not that guy. Oh, maybe it is that guy. Apparently I had him up in the air. Well, let's put him closer to the ground. So, he, he just has a trigger event. All right, he's just looking for the player. If we get a trigger event to the player, he's going to pop over here. He's going to set an event property, uh, a key called damage. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use a float. You can use integers for this. The amount of damage I'm going to send is 0 0.2. Uh, damage wise, it really, really doesn't matter. I mean, if you want to use integers and send 30 damage, that's, that's fine. I'm just, this is just what I'm using for the tutorial. It's all the same thing. And then we're going to send an event to the player called damage. On the player, we have an FSM called health. And of course we have a event called damage. So when it comes in, we get the event property, the key of damage. We know it's a type float, so we take it. We subtract our health from damage. Now the rest of it is how do we update the UI? So the easiest thing to do, okay, so for, with this, I, I put scale of screen size, I tend to like that way, is I'm just gonna make, and you can do this with images or with sliders. I'm gonna go with sliders, it's nice and simple. So here's a slider. I am gonna put it up here and I am going to anchor it to the top left corner like so and I'm going to scale it so it's a little a little, little more noticeable now <clears throat> I'm going to actually call this one uh, backslider uh, the max value is really how much health do you want to have I mean if you want to go with like a hundred you can do that that's fine in this case i'm just going to go with zero to one right but again i mean if you wanted to go for like five thousand hit points i mean you, you can do that it's really just a value so i don't want the knob so i'm literally just going to delete that so we have more or less a slaughter here and we have a fill fill area and a background i'm going to take all of these, I'm going to go to the fill and get rid of this left and right. Zero that out. Uh, I'm going to take on the fill area. I'm going to zero it out here. And that's because I don't have a knob, so I want the whole thing to just be used. Because when you have a knob, it offsets things. And I don't want that. With the background, I'm going to go with a nice deep red. Dark. And the fill... I'm actually just going to go with a bright red. So the background slider is a normal slider, and it looks like that. Pretty cool. And I'm gonna, now I'm going to take this slider and I'm going to duplicate it by Control D. I'm going to rename this one Front Slider. And I'm going to take this front slider and I'm going to child it to the back slider. So now it's sitting here. So we'll get the back slider, front slider. Uh, alternatively, we, we could we could just make a object and then child them both to the object if you want to try to keep them, you know, organized, I guess. Like you can call it, say, health bar. You know, put this anchor, this guy, into the corner. And then say, okay, I'm going to put the front slider and the back slider to the health bar. All right, you can do that too. Uh, but it's important to make sure the back slider is sitting above the front slider in this case. Now the front slider 
we don't want a background. I'm actually, I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to deactivate it. And the fill, I'm going to change it to green. So now the front slider looks like I have a background red and the back slider has a background of deep red and I have this kind of layered um, health bar. So now, and if you want, like say, if you want tons of health, you can take these both up, maximum value, that's fine. Okay, so back on the player, how do we deal with it? So the easiest way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do a template. I just, I love templates. So in a template, we're gonna need certain things. We need to know what the health is. So that needs to be an input. We need to know what the damage is. That needs to be an input. We also need to know the front slider, also an input, and the back slider, which is also an input, but he's these are game objects. That one, so we got back slider game object, damage float, front slider game object, health float. And you can use integers for these, you just gotta do a slight conversion, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. All right, so very simply, what do we do? Well, let's slider set value. Let's set the front slider to health. Just plain and simple. Next, we have numerous options. We can interplate, animate, uh, just to account. Uh, we can lerp. Uh, I, I'm just going to use the interplate, I think. So we want to interplate. Uh, oh, we have to, one more thing. We have to get slider value. All right, so we want to get the value of the back slider. And that's uh, starting back value. So we get the value. So now we can interplate from starting back value to health. And now we can give it a time, right? And you can, as long as you want, you can use a variable. Uh, for example, we can say go three, whatever. You, one, two, three, whatever. So anywhere in there is good. And I'm gonna set this as set value. So it's a new variable, it's a new float. Now, I want to set slider value again. Only now we wanna set the back slider, right? Up here we're setting the front slider, but here we're gonna set the back slider. But I'm not gonna set it to health. I want it to set to this set value. And I want to do it every frame. Now, because we don't want to be updating the UI every frame forever, I'm, I'm also just going to add a done event. I'll, I'll even call it done event, apparently. And it's just going to go to an empty state. So now that I have that, I'm going to right click, save template. We're just going to call it health bar. And then I'm going to delete this FSM. I'm going to go back into our health and where we receive the damage, right? We, we get the damage, we subtract health. So this is also where I would, I would do like the animations, check if alive or dead type of idea. Uh, for example, I should probably put that in just so you guys can see, like you could say, okay, if we are and order matters big time. If health is equal to zero, we're dead. If it's less than zero, we're dead. If it's greater than zero, we're alive. So dead, alive. So if we're alive, let's run FSM. We wanna run health bar 
and the health bar needs certain things. It needs to know what the backs, and you can also use variables to set this as well, but uh, we're gonna, it needs the backslider. It needs to know what the damage is, so let's give it damage. It needs to know what the front slider is, and it needs to know what the health is. There we go. And then uh, if we're dead, I'm gonna copy this whole action and place it here. Because whether we're alive or dead, we still wanna update that UI. All right, so very simple. Uh, said he's just gonna set damage and fire it off to our player and the player is gonna deal with it. And that template's gonna be updating the UI. And now we hit it and you see that the front health bar goes instant the back bar interplates to the health, to the front bar and if i keep hitting it it'll keep updating where it has to go so that's how you can have kind of that dual layer health bar